What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Misfits of HVAC podcast and live stream. Hope everybody out there is doing great tonight on this Saturday night. Just want to talk to some people here in the chat. I see I've got HVAC blogger Nestor is in the house. Brian Sanders, nasty HVACR. Guys, thanks a lot for hanging out with us tonight, Saturday night. I appreciate it. Hope everybody out there is doing good. So Jennifer is, we're waiting for Jennifer's arrival. Apparently uh, Val is running late, running those service calls. So she will be here momentarily. And again, I just wanted to say to everybody who's been watching the show for almost a year now, I believe. Thank you very much for tuning in every Saturday night. Our guest tonight, what a good dude. I got to meet this guy in Chicago at the HVAC Tactical Awards, him and his wife. What a nice guy. His name's Rodolfo Vargas from Texas. Let's welcome to the show. Rodolfo, how are you tonight? All right. How are you, everybody's doing? God bless everybody. So thanks again for coming on to the show, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So if everybody out there isn't aware, because the podcast will be up on the audio version and we get a lot of listeners over there, um, it's kind of split 50-50 between YouTube watchers and audio podcast listeners. But if they're unfamiliar with Rodolfo Vargas, he is Just Work HVAC on Instagram. Um, how'd you come up with that name, Just Work? Uh, well that's that's all i do is just work <laughs> um, you know friends family and my mother be calling hey what are you doing just working um but this is way before social media before i start you know playing with it um you know they'll call me oh you're too busy you're always working and then when i start getting into the social media um i did use my first name for a while and then after a while it's like man somebody was just telling me Dude, you work too much. And I was like, you know what? That's the name right there. Just work. Just work. That's awesome. So we know you're in HVAC, obviously. It's just yes. work HVAC on Instagram. You can't just work. You've got to have something. What do you do on your time off? You got a hobby? You got an interest away from uh, HVAC? Um. If, if, I, if I'm by myself, I definitely like playing chess. I'm not very good at it. I'm not a All great right. chess player. But I like playing chess or just being with my kids, my daughter, going to her taekwondo practices or her tournament as she had today. Um, yeah, just um, watching a lot of YouTube videos, learning, trying to learn, trying to develop my skills even better. And yes, sir. That's great. That's great. So HVAC guy. Uh, family man, for sure. I know I met you and your wife at the Tactical Awards. Very nice, lovely wife you have. Uh, you brought your kids along, too, to Chicago, did you not? Yes, sir. I brought my youngest one and my middle's child. Uh, but the, my youngest daughter, you know, she's the 12-year-old. She's the one that does. You Probably some people seen the videos of her. Um, but she's uh, with the Women's Pioneer Group. So she got to meet them out there in Chicago. So that was pretty cool. She was happy to meet all the members from, from the Women's Pioneer. Now, Women's Pioneer Group, is that an HVAC-related group? What is Women's Pioneer Group? Just they, have, they have a little bit of everything. HVAC, um, welders, um, electricians, carpenters. Uh, it's just pretty much anything. It's a trade-related trade group for, yes, for women. That's yes. awesome. I'm I'm really, I'm really happy that that group is out. So I'm very thankful and and hopefully to see a lot more uh, members like to start joining. So that'd be really cool. And could say the name one more time: Women's Pioneer Group. Yeah, just Women's, Women's Pioneer. Okay, and you can find those on them on Instagram, uh, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Yep. Nice. Nice. Speaking of women in the trade, I've got to send a shout out to our own Jenna at my company. Just passed her EPA certification test. Nice. Uh, congrats. nice. Congratulations to Jenna because, I mean, really right there, that's your 
that's your ticket into the trade as far as HVAC goes. Once you get that, you're good to go. So awesome. So you're based in Texas. Yes. Correct? McKinney, Texas. McKinney, Texas. <laughs> How's Texas? Because in my opinion, Texas is one of the greatest states in our in our country. And I'm a big fan of Texas. Never been. Give us a little insight on Texas. How do you like it? And uh, I love it. Uh, it's been great to me because I'm, I'm not originally from Texas. So I'm from a city called Elgin, Elgin, Illinois. So that's where I'm born and raised. That's where I'm from. But coming to Texas is a lot of great opportunity out here. Good work, good schools, a lot of good barbecue. Yeah, <laughs> no <laughs> the doubt. The weather's crazy, too. The weather's crazy. Um, it's, just, it's just pretty wild that they have, um, you know, the furnaces, air handlers, water heaters. Not all, but a good majority in the attics. That to me, that's pretty wild. No doubt. <clears throat> so Elgin, Illinois, that's uh, near Chicago. Uh, roughly 25, 30 minutes, give or take, depends on traffic. Yes, okay, sir. so so this is AHR Chicago suburb. Chicago a suburb. AHR and the tactical awards was kind of a homecoming for you then. Oh yeah, oh, going yeah. back home. Yeah. So so yeah, we definitely try to visit as much family. Um, you know, just see our old stopping grounds and definitely just went back to the AHR. So yeah, it yeah. Felt good, good uh coming home. That's felt awesome. Good. It was bitter, bitter cold though. That, yeah, Texas the... Texas made me kind of soft. So yeah, it was cold. <laughs> it was cold. Yes, yeah, it was it was frigid during AHR and the tactical awards this year. Speaking of the tactical awards, if I can bring it up real quick, the backpack you got. Yes, sir. Um, have you registered it for the five-year warranty yet? Uh, actually, that's funny you say that because I was going to call it on Monday to do yeah, that. Yeah, I've been thinking that's about it, too. I got, I got to get that uh, five-year register uh, for the Veto Pro Pack bag they gave us at the Tactical Awards. And speaking of Veto Pro Pack, I don't know. It's not a Veto Pro Pack commercial going on right now, but <laughs> their, their spring promo has just come out. Um, it's a different bag they're giving away as the, what, what do you call that? The bonus bag when you buy a tier one or tier two. Yes, thing. sir. What do you think? Did you see what they're giving away this year? I I, I like the, um, I can't think of the, because obviously it's new, but the the one that has the flip pouch. Yeah. I like that one, but man, I, I believe gotta, I got to ask my wife if I could get a, <laughs> if I could get a new one. Yeah, I, I spent my money last year on a Vito Pro Pack with the, you know, the spring promotion. But so I take it you're a Vito Pro Pack guy then. Oh, yeah. I take care of my bags. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't like taking my bags to the attics. I don't like. Yeah. If it's going to be like a rainy day or if I know it's going to be like out in the country. Yeah. that My bag stays somewhere nice and safe. <laughs> well, see, what what I like about Vito Pro Pack is there. I. Cause I don't, I bring them out. I'm always on the roof. I'm always in the elements, but they hold up pretty good. All right, guys, Rodolfo, let me interrupt you here real quick. Now you guys, the star of the show has arrived. I can see All her right. back there. Drum roll. I wish I, I I'm working on that. I've got some sound <laughs> effects coming soon, but Jennifer, welcome Jennifer. to the show. Hey guys. How, are How you, you doing, man? Sorry I'm late. Oh, man, you're good. You're good. I love the beanie. I like oh, it. Oh, thanks. I just got that in the mail. Craig sent them to us. And he also sent me a bunch of posters. So we're going to do a giveaway on this show, probably in a couple of episodes with a nice AC service tech giveaway. Nice. Wow. Nice. I'm liking the uh, I'm liking the shirt. Oh, yeah. You like that? I do. Very nice. I'm just I'm Jennifer, a big baby. Jennifer, uh, Viola and Sandy says hi. <laughs> hi, Sandy and Viola. I'm still upset that I didn't get my, my banana bread at hr i'm like we'll, we'll, i literally we'll, told we'll her yeah i told her i was gonna be like that the night of the awards that i was gonna wait on it and i wasn't gonna eat any until after the award show i was gonna go home in like my ball gown and just like eat it like an apple <laughs> <laughs> but i never got it so yeah definitely next time yes man we got you we got you what i miss well, I, we were asking Rodolfo about Texas uh, Veto okay. Pro Pack tool bags. Uh, speaking of that, Jennifer, have you registered your Veto Pro Pack bags you got at AHR for the five-year warranty yet? 
I didn't know that I had to. And you know what? Yes. I'm glad you just said that because my Wiesman veto that I got last year, I haven't registered that either. I didn't know you had yes. to. Yes. Register it. Oh, we'll Register. Do. Monday, Monday. Yeah. Holy cow. That would have sucked. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's my contribution to the show tonight. If you get a veto pro pack, that. register it. Um, as you a matter of fact, register them. I've got a couple of, I, I'm going to throw my uh, tech, I don't know, LC bag through yep. the warranty procedure because I ripped a couple of the buttons off. And I don't need a new tool bag, but I just want to see what they're going to do. So that yeah, might you be should document the, the process too. I'm sure lots of people want to know. Might they don't break. They so don't. it's like none of us know what happens when it breaks because they don't break. And like, so we don't know what to do when they do. See, I, I baby my vetoes. I don't like getting them dirty. I don't like. Do you? Yeah, I don't. I don't like. Yeah, putting it so, through like wear and tear. No. I'll confess that my AHR veto is actually my travel bag now. So like, I've been on like ten planes with that thing, and it's just perfect. And Ben will tell you they don't fit under the front seat, but they do. Thank if you, you stand it up in front of your seat and then kick it down and slide it under, it'll do it. All right. But anyway. That one I baby. That one is only for travel. Like I don't want I don't want the graphic to come off or anything like that, you know. But then like my Wiesman one is unrecognizable. It's yeah. Destroyed. I had a and all I my had little a, MCs are. I had a hard time getting mine to fit in the overhead compartment on the plane ride back from Chicago. And I yeah, started I to try. I started to panic a little bit because I was like, <laughs> I was right in the front of the plane, right? My my seat was right in the front. And as I'm like getting on, I've got all these other people coming in behind me. And then I'm like trying to shove I this thing in, you know? <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, now I got all these people backed up. And uh, so I took it down. I was like, just go ahead. Just go, go. And Leave it to went. Ryan to worry about everyone else. <laughs> and then I, I finally got it shoved in there. And I was worried because I was like, you know, I just got this thing. It's going to get all messed up. You know, it's sc yeah. scuffed up, but I lost my pins like that. Val put our pins on yeah. the bags. Yeah. And when we got home, there were no pins. He swears they were there, but yeah. So, and I, I messaged Ben and he's like, no, I only made 300. Like exactly. Ooh. I took, damn it. I took two pins that night. And See, I, you're I've the lost reason. Both. <laughs> I've lost them both. Yeah. So uh, register your veto bags. Monday. Uh, Monday. Let's number, do it guys. Uh, number one. We'll do. But, so yeah, Jennifer, sure. I um I was talking with Rodolfo. It's a good dude here. Check yeah, him he out. Is. Just work HVAC on Instagram. He goes live. I don't know what is it five, <laughs> six, seven times a day. I'm constantly getting <laughs> uh, just work HVAC is live again. Half the time I can't even click on because I'm working myself. But um, yeah, same. So, and, uh, so the, re the reason why I keep doing the live, well, I. I the lies was somebody was asking us like, well, do you do the actual work? Because you know, I, I'm not very good. I with hate that video, question with, so with the much. Videos. So, so I was annoying. like, well, because you know, I'll, I'll probably just do like a little video of what I'm about to do, but I never do a video of the actual work being the work. done. It's yeah. so hard. So, so, so I was hard. Like, okay, well, I'll do the live, and you guys, you know, you you take your opinions from there, and you'll see it's actually me doing the you know the work. Yeah. Um, I have to say this though, Rodolfo. Fuck them. And I, I know, Ryan, I was supposed to do better, but that's a situation where I had to come out. Okay. Yes, so man. people say this to me all the time. They call me a passenger princess or they're like, what do you hand them the tools or like whatever. But mm. it is so hard to record yourself working while you're working. Like yeah. I even had the flip phone and I would like set it up and I'd go back after recording for like an hour and you can't see me a single time <laughs> or you can yeah. only see like my shoulder and there's no equipment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't have none of the fancy equipment. It's just my phone and right. What like, what y'all get is, is you know that's that's what it is. No, that that's is my pet peeve. Like, I, would we I, make it up? <laughs> yeah, I mean that would be sad if you're like making up the HVAC repair work videos. Uh, speaking of lives, though, I clicked on one of Rodolfo's lives today, and there he was in an attic patching up an, an evaporator coil that you had just done a uh, leak search on the system. So uh, why don't you give us a little insight into what yeah. you were doing there? I'm assuming you opened it up to uh, check the evaporator coil for a leak. 
Yeah, well, I got to assist. I got I, that was the thing. I couldn't find a leak. I had the system pressurized uh, 300 psi, and I ran out of nitrogen, unfortunately. Yeah, I hate that. Um, but then I was trying to get my sniffer, trying to hear it. Nothing. I let the I let it sit there for 300 uh, probably like close to 45 minutes. The needle never moved. But the, the system was empty, and I was like, well, what, "What happened to the refrigerator? It had to go somewhere." It was yeah. flat. It was flat when I first got there. It was flat. Oh, huh. insane! That so, is insane. I hate yeah. that because I've I've been on a few oh, of those Lord. myself. Okay, you you get the call. You're like, "All right, you're going to do a leak search. The unit's flat. You figure I'll hear this oh, thing big hissing. Hole. I'll hear it in a matter of seconds. The connection's completely off. Whatever. And then it holds." <laughs> All no. you can do is uh, <laughs> swap out the filter dryer and vacuum it down and see what happens, yep. I guess. But yeah. Yeah, I start moving. I start, um, I know uh, like Snow King, he jumped on. I think Brian Sanders jumped on. And we're trying, we're all there live, you know, trying to figure things out together. Look here, look there. That's pretty cool. I like it. So I'm moving, you know, the capillary tubes around, maybe something is yep. stuck or nothing uh the low high pressure switch the wires i'm just trying to dangle those around move them around nothing you, this is you why guys think... this is why everyone's getting ultrasonic and i don't have one yet I but have this one. I love is it. why i can see oh, where you that... have one it, i have it, one yeah i have, I have the accutrack it's not the one with the oh, flexible gooseneck but it's got i've had it for years and i, I don't use it a lot but I have found some very hard to yeah. find leaks with it a couple of times. And I was like, well, I'm glad I had that thing. For um, sure. Yeah. So in my situation, I think that would have definitely played a, a great factor. Yeah. It, I would have heard know, that nitrogen for sure. It seems to me like if a system is completely flat, right. But then you pressurize it and it holds 300 pounds. It, it has to be something that is like, your Schrader core or your valve yes. or something where or the somebody valve wasn't open all the way. Maybe. I, I, I don't know. That's crazy. Cause you figure so, 300 pounds, it, you would find the leak if it was right. leaking somewhere. So, you know, when I put my gauges on, um, I was like, damn, this, this stuff is empty. So I took off the gauges and started spraying the soap bubbles on the, where the Schrader is at. Nope. No bubbles. Nothing. So I was like, Oh, well, damn. <laughs> Those are the ones that'll keep you up at night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's, it's gonna bother me. Now that you guys bring it up, now it's really gonna bother me. <laughs> <laughs> right? Did what you kind end of system up... was it? Oh, split. go ahead, Rye. No, go ahead. Split, split system. system. Yeah, I didn't sure. see it. Go ahead, Rodolfo. Was uh, it a... so the, the only thing um, the customer said that they had somebody out there two, three years ago. Um, same thing. They just added refrigerant, and I was like, wow. "Man, it's got to be. It's got to be in the coil." Hypothetically, I don't think had... I'd gas and go. Yeah. So what might be helpful? Do you have a thermal imager? Yes, I do. Honestly, I did not use it, but I do have. So, one. yeah. So if you end up back there and you look at the, you can view the coil, like take the panel off and view the coil. You might be able to catch like cold in a hot spot. You know what I mean? Like somewhere I, where it's I, colder in one spot where it shouldn't be. Yeah. I've that's done good, that before too. But it's yeah, I'm not to take it. That, that's a good idea. I like that. Is it, yeah. is it a possibility that I, I don't know how cold or it gets there, but is it a possibility that maybe the heat was running and expanded a leak in the evaporator that lost all the refrigerant and now that it's, now it's I don't cold, know. So it's not yeah, expanded yeah. anymore and the I don't know. smaller. I've actually seen that happen. That's why those though. white line sets, those the junk white line sets that they had yeah. to recall on them all and everything. So the problem with those is underneath the insulation, it would pit little tiny pinholes throughout the line set. And so yeah. that would, that happened with one. Like I saw it, I was like, this is flat. It's gotta be, there's gotta be a bunch of them or a big one. Like something's gotta be going on. I went back on a hot day and sure enough, those holes were bigger again. They were leaking refrigerant by, it was insane. Jennifer, I, I, I just I have AC. to say again, you look incredible in a Guns N' Roses shirt and an AC service <laughs> technique. I, 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 I got to the guns, throw out the guns. <laughs> I'm so happy about that, Ryan. Thank you. This is like my signature, like how I look every day, too. So that's funny. Like I didn't yeah. have time to change for Misfits, and you guys are like all about it. <laughs> yeah. Down. Rodolfo, let me ask you. Uh, primarily, most of the work you're doing on equipment is in the attic. Um, a, a good majority of, of it, of it is yes. In the attic. Yes. All right. 
that impact. leads me to my next question. What is the strangest thing you found in an attic? There has to be something. What is it? Uh, man, there's a lot of strange stuff that I, I came across. But one of them, one of them was, one of them was a, a security camera uh, that was active in the attic. Yes, I thought that was super strange. So one day we well, were, well, you don't want somebody jerking off in your attic. So <laughs> I could see you right there. But imagine there. if they did, and you had to see it. <laughs> So, but I'd rather we, not see the tape. <laughs> so the guy was some type of cyber something, something, <laughs> whatever yep. title he has. Like a geek. Big old house. He had a big old house. Uh, yeah. So we go up to the attic and we couldn't find a light switch. And then sure enough, the guy goes, uh, it's to the left behind the, the pole. And I tell my, my, the, I was with one of the guys. And I said, like, what did you say? He said, I didn't say nothing. He goes, no, it's me. It's right here behind the pole. And I, we're looking and we're like, what the heck is this? That he was, was speaking. That was, weird. that was weird to me. He was talking through the camera. He was talking to the camera. Oh, wow. That's, That's hilarious. Even weirder because yeah. he, he's, like, actively he's actively watching, watching, watching it. Yeah. That's <laughs> like, I do that to my kids if they're fighting. You know what I mean? I'll be like, hey, I don't know. Like, so I tell, the, I tell the guy, hey, make sure don't curse. Matter of fact, don't even talk. <laughs> yeah, just shut your mouth. Don't breathe. Yeah, don't talk. Don't be a mannequin. <laughs> Yeah, that oh was one God. of them. There's other weird ones. Um, yeah, it's probably, you know, I'm pretty sure you guys got weird stories too, but yeah, that was probably one of them. I found I've never found anything weird in an attic. I just find it in basements, which just makes yeah. it 10 times creepier. I did this like set of apartment houses that were like 10 apartments each. And in the basement of every single one of them was a cage. Hmm. dead ass a cage with a door there were like a bunch of them so i'm not thinking properly because i'm like spooked you know at this point so i'm like what could those cages be for and i'm like all these things are running through my mind this is where they keep their captors like whatever yeah, and then i like cool. that was like jennifer they have separate storage because they're apartments <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. i i remember when i was very brand new to the trade i i was probably 19 20 years old i got a call one o'clock in the morning for uh, no heat on an oil furnace. I get there. Ugh. Dude takes me down to his basement, flips on the lights, Nazi flag, stuffed oh bear, God, no. all sorts of like, just like, <laughs> I don't know, Nazi paraphernalia <laughs> everywhere. I'm like, Ryan's Oh, like, this is where I die. <laughs> oh, awesome. I see you're into, you know, I just uh, take me to the furnace. Right, what do you that was say? Awesome. Like, I, I, like, I, I can't much. possibly say. I've been to a house like that. Um, yeah, same thing. They had all the Nazi flags, and the guy was super nice. Yeah. That was, really? That was, so that didn't match. It didn't match, but he was super nice. Super yeah. nice. He was the kid from American History X, but not the older brother. <laughs> <laughs> he was super nice. I don't It was the weird. I was like, okay, he's a, he's a friendly guy. So I don't know. It's like, always the ones you don't think like all, the <laughs> meanest people i've encountered are little like old white ladies and the nicest people i've encountered are like the old white men like believe it or not you would think it would be swapped but it, it is not like yeah, you can't used, read people man i used to run into a lot of people who had train setups in their basement have you ever run into that really like not no. That'd like, be cool. like they had like tables set up like old dudes and they'd have train, like I'd enjoy that. train tracks everywhere and fake mountains. And like model and train, village. Like model trains everywhere. And I'd be like, damn, look at this. I would love that. I cool. wouldn't get any work done. I would These be like that, fascinated. They have really old ones. Those are really collectibles. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Them, but I know they're collectibles. Yeah. I didn't even yeah. realize that. And I was looking for like a Christmas tree train, you know, to go around it for my kids. And I, they were like $2,000, $5,000. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is so cool about trains? That was like that one's from yeah. 1932. Yeah. And that's not the full <laughs> set either. That's 2000 either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What the hell? It's like one piece with a magnet I, on it. <laughs> I found a, a bag of marijuana once in a, a flue damper on an oil furnace once. Mm. I, like the dude was there. I was pulled it, it out. Was it restriction? No, nah, it wasn't really affecting oh, anything man, because it just cool. kind of sat inside but i was like oh and he's like my kid and i'm like yeah whatever oh, yeah. Dude, your kid my ass so you won't mind if i keep it then <laughs> <laughs> yeah i, I had i had a, another one where they didn't have airflow in a certain room everywhere else would had airflow and i guess they had like a company out they couldn't figure it out 
Um, and it turns out to be, it was what? So it was like December. They could, you know, it was cold. And when I opened up the grill, I stuck my hand down the grill and I pulled out a big old bag. And it was the, the kids' uh, Halloween candy that the mom stuffed down there for she won't, <laughs> so we won't eat it all. She forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Genius. I found I had a similar problem like that, but it was Playboy magazines. And it mm. was like in the master bedroom, not the kid's bedroom. It was like the dad. I that's a good spot for it, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's but good. imagine a girl tech comes into your house and she's like, This is why you don't have airflow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no eye contact. Yeah. I I found I've found some magazines before. I did residential for 12 years. I found them up on the duct and stuff, yeah. whatever. So, I found a gun one time. I was, oh, uh, work, me, well, me and Mikey, Mikey G farm strength. He doesn't work with our, our company anymore, but he's been featured in a couple of videos. We were up on a roof and I saw a leather case down on top of like a electrical. I don't know what they even are. There's like their electrical boxes that are down in commercial parking lots. Oh yeah. Like in the I back. know what you mean. I see the this leather ones, back yeah. and I've got an eye for I want a dumpster diver. I, I love it. I, yeah. and so I've always Ooh, got that? my eyes open for something. And uh, I, I went to throw the filters off the roof and I see this bag down there. So I went down and sure enough, a pistol, you know, ammunition. And I, what? I was like, Mikey was with me. He had just gotten hired. And I was like, oh, oh man, no. what do I do now? You're at a crossroads. <laughs> I am. Uh, as if it was just me by myself, I would have <laughs> quietly no stuck it in my van and drove home and had it. But I was but like, oh. teach someone else to do. I was like, we better call somebody. So I called a sheriff's office and they came <laughs> out. I was like, he's like, where's it at? And I'm like, right over there, bro. I didn't touch it. But yeah, somebody, I, I'm right. assuming somebody got out of the car. They're probably unpacking something and set it up there. And, you know, you don't forget it. your gun. They set it there because it was used in a <laughs> heinous crime. Well, I've <laughs> always said it's not a bad, you know, it's good. I, I, I maybe I should just shut my mouth. Yeah, we'll move on. <laughs> there are things we cannot say on this show. Yeah, I should, probably shouldn't talk about <laughs> that. <Talking right>. but... <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing um hey um, rudy do you yes, wear crocs do i i used to yes. many many years ago <laughs> I, I hear used... sandy i hear sandy <laughs> so so now what i do i ended up stealing my daughter's crocs to go out to get the mail and come back in <laughs> but i used to own a Crocs still way might get them back in the day way back in the day i used to own them when they were not even popular put it that way i Everybody think i have to, to get some now like I, the whole, the whole deal is that I would never, ever wear them. And everybody keeps trying to get me to. So that's what started all of this. But Jimmy age back teacher sent me a box <clears> with <throat> the snow plows, the headlights, the um, salt shakers that go on the back and balls. I think I did the, balls. I think I did that video in Chicago. Uh, I put it on a store where they had the Crocs and the snow plows. Yes. They were kicking. Yes. <laughs> Yes, like, that was so good. So that's why I have to try it because I saw your video and I was like, they work. Yeah, <laughs> so cool. Good. Crocs, Crocs Nation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I wore Crocs when they were not even popular. Not too many people knew about them. Uh, let me ask yes. you this. Yes, what sir. what what kind of socks do you wear with those? Because my son has Crocs now, but he wears like regular white, just regular no, white you socks with them. And I'm like, bro, they got to be funky. These don't. Look I, good. I just wear regular Walmart socks. <laughs> nothing, nothing too special. <laughs> uh, so Brian I Sanders saw somebody who was. Go ahead. Oh, Crux <laughs> also double as a personal flotation device here. <laughs> yeah, they would definitely float me. But yeah, so somebody at the symposium like bought the HVAC school socks that go up to your knees, which are pretty awesome. They have like stuff all over them and then they had their crocs on with those but they also have hvac school gibbets so it was just really? it was so aesthetic yeah it's pretty cool it's how they're perfect. making a lot of uh knickknacks where you can put in the holes yeah. the crocs. see the yeah. crocs that i had didn't have holes in it they were just they were flat. The original flat ones yeah. i remember yeah, they were like the old school like european like those wooden shoes I it guess. was like this yeah <laughs> Like That's like like had. clogs, like uh Swedish like women like wear. Yeah, that they're yeah. 
And, and to me, at that time, I yeah. thought it was the coolest thing because I was like, these are ugly. I like them. <laughs> those are probably the whole thing. everybody looked cool at me like, man, ugly. those shoes are weird or they're ugly. Those are probably, I was like, yeah, don't buy them. Those are <laughs> yeah, probably worth right? some money, right? Don't buy them. I just want to wear them. Be the first. Yeah. Award so, did, speaking of trinkets, did you guys see HVAC Jess's post today about her no. necklace? Uh, mm -mm, no. She has a pair of gauges, sterling silver set of gauges necklace. And oh, yes, 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 the, yes, yes. The knob turns. Ah. So I reached out to the guy who made them. So I, when I went to his page, I was blown away. He has digital gauge ones. He has wow. like torches. He has everything, you name it. So I asked him if he had any pipe wrenches. And he does like four different sizes of pipe wrenches. He can write like a company on it or engrave it, whatever you want. You can get any color you want. So I ordered a silver pipe wrench to go on. It's going to go on this long chain. So I think it nice. should be awesome. But yeah, I ordered one today. They're really cool though. His name's Donovan something. I'll post it on, on Instagram if anybody's interested. Yes, but yeah, you got to check out his page. It's cool. It's pretty cool what our, what our community is doing, you know? Yeah. Somebody it's, made Christmas ornaments last year. It's amazing <laughs> what we're doing and, and what a lot of people are bringing into the community. It's 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 amazing. It's beautiful to see. Uh, yeah, speaking of sure. that, Rodolfo, can you uh, tell Jennifer again about the program that your daughter was interested in and that she got to meet out in Chicago? Oh, um, I'm, I'm in it. Okay. Uh, Women Women's... Pioneers Unity? Yes. yes. Yeah, That's cool. I'm a member. Actually, I got into it because of Viola. So they reached out to me when they first started, and I thought it was a scam, which is really sad. And the reason for that is because I had just had this women's society thing reach out to me and say that I had been nominated and I won and like all this stuff. And you got to like pay this much and you can be a member. That's your membership fee or whatever. Well, in researching it, I found out it was a scam. So like the next day, Women Pioneers, I had never heard of them. They had just made their Instagram. So it was like they had like three followers at the time. So to me, I'm like, I'm not following for this again. <laughs> you know what I mean, so then after Vi uh, after Viola met up with them in, was it Chicago? Chicago, yes. Yeah, yeah. Chicago. Um, I realized that it was a real thing and that I knew half of the members. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, guys. Like, can I still come over? And they're like, yeah, come on. You know, way before my daughter, way before Women's Pioneer, even, you know, you know, you, uh, Jennifer, yep. I was always a real big advocate for the women's in the trades. I don't care if it's yeah. HVAC, plumbing, welding. I don't care. As long as you, you want to be part of the trades, great. I was I was always right. for it. So when I saw that group come out, well, I was already seeing you first. And I said, oh, man, this is awesome. And then. HVAC Jess, uh, Brandy, and I was like, oh man, these yeah. are great. And I used to show these videos to my daughter and she's like, oh, I like that. They're doing that. And I was like, yeah, that they're doing that, you know, pretty cool. And then women's pioneer group start popping up. I was like, oh man, this is awesome. Um, because they're they, I don't think they had that many members, and I was like, well, obviously, yeah, I don't want to fairly new. Um, but I want to help them at least grow their membership and um at that time, I was already showing my daughter things here and there for the trades. She was know. already going to work with you, I remember. Yep. And then I was like, man, this might be a perfect thing. Yeah. At least they can guide her or at least uh, mentor or at least give her some. And they'll keep it relevant for her in her yeah. life. And, and, and a lot of the members were, you know, they're young ladies. and They are, you know, yeah. Different age groups, but lot, most of them were young. And I was like, man, this is perfect right here. Perfect. This is the, the perfect, perfect to look up to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so I got to send her is. an H. So for very few younger girls, we do do it, but a lot of people don't know we do it. So they don't reach out for it. But I remember I was going to do it for Viola. We do a junior membership for HVHX. So they get like a printout saying that they're a member of HVHX. This is the responsibilities that they have to their trade, which is like, you know, always lead with kindness and always have integrity and like all these things. It looks like a list out like so that they can help to make choices if they're faced with certain situations, even though they're kids, like they can still make those adult choices, you know? So like we do this whole printout and then we send them a bunch of fidget toys and the fidgets are to keep them moving with their hands so that yeah, they'll nice. always be hands-on oriented kids. And it, nice. for some reason it works. But yeah. We sent them, we sent one to Bill's daughter, Bill Russell's daughter, curious age, that guy, awesome. she loved it. So I got to yeah. send one to her. Yeah. And, and also, you know, uh, I think it's important, like <clears throat> we're always wanting like, you know, the new kids to come into the trades. Um, 
yeah you know more women that more guys do, um you know fred i guess you know can I, can I make yeah, a, the youth. let me interject right here real quick i see steve for <laughs> everything hvacr he just said we need more women in the trade uh, you guys might think i'm an asshole for this but just recently in louisville a uh, semi truck was hanging off the edge of a bridge. Have you guys seen this? No. Yeah, semi truck hanging off the edge of a bridge. Uh, a first responder had to go down there and rescue the driver. The driver oh, was shit. a woman. The driver was a woman. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe Listen, HVAC. Shame, hey, hey, hey but... guys. Hey, I've seen videos too where guys uh, <laughs> hanging off the cliff too. I think there's a UPS. Uh... <laughs> FedEx one, two. So listen, I'm not ever going to say that I'm the best driver. Okay. Like I prefer yeah. not to drive, but when I have to, I am kind of a shitty driver. I do tend to hit stuff. Okay. But I am killer at HVAC. You guys <laughs> should search that. Don't search. Say no I'm trying to have your back. <laughs> exactly. Search uh, semi truck hanging off bridge in Louisville. Is that I how will. you say it, Steve? Louisville. He always corrects Louisville. me. Um, Louisville. But yeah, it's, it's like crazy. I, I would never want to drive. A semi truck, ever? No, me either. Mm -mm. I have a hard time with the box. Even when I drive the van, never. <laughs> so no, I drive the van and it like I just try to go over my shoulder all the time and I can't and it makes me fucking crazy. I don't know how people drive them. I really don't. I don't think I ever learned to use my mirrors correctly. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a good skill and to do. Uh, Ask Jen the about the pump. gas. Gas so this one time last year, I was like having a super pissed off day <clears throat> and I was not paying attention and I will fully admit that. And I went to pump gas in my truck. Right. And I was pissed off because Val was supposed to get the gas. Well, he's not necessarily supposed to get the gas, but he always gets the gas. Right. So I never have to get the gas. <laughs> so I'm like, what do you mean? I have to get the gas. So I was so pissed off about this. So I get to the gas pump. I pump my gas. I'm like, OK, finally, rock and roll. Let's go. And I get in and I take off and I take the. Oh, no. concrete pylon in front of the gas pump that stops you from hitting said gas pump oh, to wow. the to my wheel well <laughs> which then i drive away so it just like the pylon is here and my truck wheel well is here and it just goes down my truck i mean oh, up wow. in the wheel well and i'm driving forward it dented my gas tank. It made it so my door didn't open. I literally destroyed the side of my truck. <laughs> and I kept going. I was like, what's happening? Like, didn't even know what's happening. All right, so right. Then, I gotta go back to the you worst now. Part, the worst part is so many people watched it. So many people. So this one girl, wow. like, I hop out, I look, and I'm like, fuck. And I get back into my truck, and I'm like, well, my boyfriend's going to kill me, but I guess that's the <laughs> as long as I get uh, home, right? This my... woman walks up to me and says, I did that last week. <laughs> My wife was at Walmart once, right? And the parking spot, she pulled into the parking spot, but apparently in front of the parking spot was like a walkway. And then oh, yeah. another parking spot on the other side. And she didn't think about didn't see the backing walkway. out. She put it in drive and went <laughs> over the thing. And then couldn't back up, couldn't go forward. <laughs> It had to have a tow truck come out and like get her off the separating she was, whatever. She was framed on the walk. Yeah. And she like called me and she's all pissed off like the Walmart. How did dare something I wrong. have done this? Uh, yeah. How how dare they put this <laughs> walkway here or whatever? I was like, oh boy. Um, no, same. I told Val my excuse was that they painted it the same color as the gas pump. I'm like, aren't those yeah. supposed to be yellow? Why is it blue? It's the same color as the fucking gas pump. Yes. <laughs> They're at fault. Yeah. <laughs> Not us. Oh, man. I'm never going to live that down, though. Brett literally brings it up every chance he can get. He, like, all couldn't right. believe it. It was like him and Val commiserating against me all day. All right. All right. Back to our guest. Sorry, <laughs> Rudolph. We went off on a <laughs> complete. Or, yeah. We do have a guest here. His name's we Rodolfo Vargas. But just um, work HVAC if, on Instagram. If, if I can, if I can say, um, like how yeah, we're ahead. always trying to yeah. bring people in and meet people yeah. and young people, you know, young kids, girls. I, I would like to see somehow like the trades or or someone. I you know, obviously it's just a thought in my head, but 
you know, like the boys and girls clubs, introduce the trade yes. to, to a group like that, uh, uh, a location. Younger like kids. That. Younger kids. Um, reason I say that is because who who knows the next young girl that's in there, that's that's the next Jennifer. The next Absolutely. young boy that's in there, that's the next doctor, the next Ben, the yep. next. You got to give them at least that option the to chance. experience yes. something because the trades, in my opinion, saved my life. I mean, really, I mean, I, I wasn't college bound, you know, uh, this right. trade has provided a substantial income for my family. It provide, I mean, I'm able yeah. to do what I want to do with it. It's nothing to sneeze at. And it's, you know, right. I'm not the best. I'm not the brightest. I'm not the top of the you know, tier here, but the trades have provided me with a, a healthy job, with a healthy income and a, a good Dirty retirement hands, money, baby. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, I'm, uh, I would, I, I love what you're saying and, uh, I'm totally behind yeah. it and Jennifer too. Yeah. I'm super proud of her. I really am. <laughs> I'm like an old uncle. You guys tell me this though. So like I'm a girl and I always attribute that to why I wasn't introduced to the trade. You're a girl. You're a woman. You're a woman. Okay. I'm a woman. (laughs) That sounds so weird. I still inside in here. I'm still like 15 year old Jennifer. So like, (laughs) but yeah, so I wasn't introduced to the trades and I always attribute that to the fact that I was female and going through school, like, I did notice like we have we had a Vogue Center and we had like Tech Start, which I did take. But the girls during Tech Start, which is like our mm-hmm. middle school vocational school, they were pushed to well, we were pushed to early childhood education and banking and marketing and these kinds of things. Whereas the guys were pushed to automotive and carpentry and electrical and you know the trades. So they did group them all as trades, but they really weren't as far as how we know the trades today, you know. I wouldn't put nursing as a trade necessarily, you know, um, but that's where they pushed us. We weren't even introduced to that stuff until we were in eighth, ninth, 10th grade. But like you guys, what about you? Even in high school, like were you guys made to feel like the trades were an option for you or it was like, that's the backup yeah. to college. Yeah. I think it was more of a backup, but they, they really didn't push it or try to like make it's a good a great life, idea. Chris, you know, they, it's just right. It was like, if you sense. don't get into college, you could do this. Barely even that, but yes, Barely pretty much. That. I, but I like make, that makes me sad. I'm making more money than both of my sisters who both are college graduates. My uh, so, college degree that I was using before HVAC, I was making twelve fifty an hour. <laughs> yeah. Think about that. Twelve fifty an sad. hour. And I had yeah. barely any any debt from it. You know, right. It was minimal, really. It was paid off. I didn't have any. A, it was I, I had to take out a loan to go to the trade school. But if you go through the union and do their training, I mean, that's you pay it in it's with whatever. Same. But um, so it was a very minimal debt uh, to do it. I know my Small buddy, of time. my buddy, Steve from everything HVACR. He didn't even go to trade school. He got in the trade. Many didn't. And yeah. he is just was able to. Uh, you know, get it. The dude just learners. got it. Can a lot of that. people yeah. just have that and they yep. are able to just do it. And, um, you know, the trades, I'm all for it. If my daughter wanted to get into some sort of trade related job, she's only eight and she's about to turn eight. So I'm not really thinking about that now, but she's so smart. My son, you, you know, I, I would be, all behind him getting into a trade related job for sure. Yeah. Because if you put in the work and you get in it young, I mean, it's first just, of all, it's society so messed up with how they look at trades. We are the infrastructure infrastructure of the entire world without us. There's nothing. Look at I what think, happened during COVID. And I think that was the switch between how people started looking at trades. Because I think we it's, were changing. The it's changing. It's yeah, changing for sure that there's, a, you know, I got people now, they're calling me. Hey, oh, I got this. I got that. You know, I'm like, oh, I love it. I'll get the text message. <laughs> hey, Ryan, how you doing? How's the family? Haven't you know, seen you since high how school. You been? I haven't seen you since <laughs> high school or eighth grade. You. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I need you for this, you know. <laughs> and, and the friends you know. and family discount, please. 
and meanwhile, this guy <laughs> is a college graduate with whatever, you know, it, it's can't something heat. not everybody can do. It's a yeah. great, it's a great, you know, it's a great living and it's an honest living. And what I love most about it's the fun. trades is you learn how to fix one thing. It opens up everything. Other things. I yes. can fix yeah. everything around my house. Like today. Yep. I painted our whole basement because I've, I've redone the drywall. I'm painting the entire basement. And my oh, wife nice. was like, it's so cheap. Oh, it's uh, what it cost us for the paint. I said, yeah, the labor though. What and did I life. save us? What did I save us in labor? You know, yep. not that a college but graduate. But we as trade paint, wives, but... we don't think that way. We are not, that's not wired in our brains. We just yeah. know that like our man's going to fix it. And that's it. <laughs> We're like, I've never thought about like how much did we save ourselves by fixing this? It's just always been this way. Like we just reran our whole electrical panel like two days ago. Oh, wow. I need like, to re I need to get into my electrical panel. I, it, when we bought the house, there was a couple questionable breakers that yep. I just put off in the back of my brain. Same. But That's I wake I up in the middle do. of the night <laughs> and I think about those questionable breakers. I'm staring well, yeah. at the ceiling so like, you oh, should, shit. You should do something because like my $900 light bill a month and I'm like, how? I have to beg my teenagers to turn their lights on at night. Like, how? And then I find out it's those questionable breakers. Just There's just power uh, leaking uh, by uh, everywhere. Uh, uh, so. uh, curious okay. HVAC says Ryan has gone off the rail. When when did I go off the rails? When? Ryan's the one keeping the rails together. I'm not sure. Really. Okay, Bill. <laughs> if Ke Helen Keller had a podcast, what does that mean? <laughs> Holy crap! I, I'm Bill trying to keep the up same with this podcast chat. that we're watching. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up I, with this chat. It's it's incredible. I love Helen Keller. That was a great. Uh, I used to watch. I literally can't even see the chat, events, and I kind of so. like it that way. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's get back to our guest. Like I said, twenty minutes ago. Yes, I have like forty questions. So just work HVAC, <laughs> Rodolfo Vargas. You can find yes, him on sir, Instagram. Yes, uh, Texas moved from oh. Chicago to Texas. Elgin, Did we already go over how he got into HVAC? No, go for it. Ask okay, the question. Let's do that. How'd you get into HVAC, Rudy? All right, so a buddy of mine by the name of Cesar Acevedo, a.k.a. Junie, he's the one that Ooh. introduced me to HVAC. I did not know what heating and air conditioning was. Never. We didn't grow up with it. We didn't have air conditioning in our house. Yeah, so when he was that. telling me this, I was like, what the hell is that? So he was telling me, well, it's this, you know, for your house. I was like, but my house don't have, don't have <laughs> air conditioning. What do you mean? Yeah, so he, he took me on, on a ride with him and... Um, yeah, I, I saw it, and then one day he was like, "Oh, just stop by my my job. Uh, you can talk to the owner." And I didn't know that talking to the the owner was an a interview. Oh, and so when so I went up, you in. so I went <laughs> I went there, and then um, yeah, the interview the owner was like, "Yeah, just you go ahead and ride with Caesar. You know, you seem like you're wow, you're okay. you let him train you." So that's, then I went. That's I went gotta with him. be. That's got to be one of the best types of interviews, though, really. Yeah. Interview a guy when he doesn't even know he's being interviewed. <laughs> yeah, you don't got to be nervous. Proof, right you just there. be yourself. Be yeah, yourself. So, he, so I rode with him, and then uh, and then he was like, yeah, I go to, I go to uh, you know, the community college. That's where I'm getting all the courses, and then I'm working here. He goes, matter of fact, go up there, talk to this counselor. So he kind of like, in a way, guide me to where He was where your I mentor. Meet. Yeah, so I, I love, love for him. I love I love him for it. So and so awesome. yeah, when I when I talk to him, I, I always show him my appreciation. I tell him, hey man, thank you. I you know, thank you, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. Let me speak That's on thing, this. Like Ryan quick. was saying. Oh, sorry, oh. Jennifer. <laughs> the man behind the mask. Yeah, uh, Nestor HVAC mask. blogger says Rodolfo, blogger. The, the man behind the mask. Can you give us a little insight on the mask? Because that okay. is your do you have yeah. it with you? Uh, I no, I left it somewhere. Um, I have <laughs> it, but it's somewhere. Uh, the reason behind the mask is back at home in Elgin, like or when we go to like old buildings, like old factories, because uh, a lot of times we're working in factories and old homes, and you know everything is in a basement. And what was happening is when we we're taking out the ducts, the ducts would be wrapped in asbestos. Yeah. So. You know, I used to wear the mask way, 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 way before all this COVID stuff. So 
Um, then when it's I came so to Texas, looking. when I came to Texas, you know, that's when I started like, man, this is crazy that all the, you know, everything is in the attics. It's very dusty up there. So I just start taking my, uh, my mask with me up in the attic. It's a respirator if you guys haven't seen it. And it's something about the way that Just Work dresses on a roof or like in an attic, like something about the whole aesthetic is just so like zombie apocalypse badass. <laughs> it looks so good. Hey, I, I ain't gonna lie. A lot the of the push up video. A, a lot of the Texas guys were looking at me like, "Yo, you, you're not hot. That's crazy. Why are you wearing that?" I said, like, "Man, I, you know, I got, I don't want my allergies Safe. messing up." And they, yeah. they're like, "Dude, that looks crazy. You're the first guy I ever we ever seen that do something like that." And I was like, well, "Y'all should be doing this too." Yeah. We all Plus, should. you don't we know what the be. hell you're breathing up in the attic with the yeah, fiberglass and the insulation in and the, the Texas heat, the dust. Like, Oh yeah, it, no. it, it, it'd be like and we all put ourselves at risk. It'd be like 138 degrees, and I got my mask, but I'm sweating, drinking water, but then also I have the camel bag with me. Yes, uh, I love it. Know. So talk about the camel bag. Talk oh. about this idea. <laughs> all right, so, so uh, yeah, being in wait, Adam, wait, 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 real quick, did you pitch it to Vito? I like have. We talked about. I have. Okay, okay, go ahead. Um, so I'll be I'll be in the attics, and it'll just be thirsty. Your water. Your water will just get super hot. That's it. It won't last very long. But in the um, camelbacks, I'll throw ice in there. It'll last a lot longer than than normal. Um, so yeah, I'm just always constantly and it's drinking easily water. accessible. It's easy accessible. I'm just constantly drinking water, just constantly. Yes. And it's it just becomes like a like a norm. You're just constantly drinking. Yeah, it's a habit. Um, I'm hands free. I got the bag. If I need some tools, it's there. And you guys, this is not bulky. This is very no. a very lightweight, Same. very small bag that's thin. You're not going to get hooked on stuff crawling through the attic with it on. Mm -hmm. You don't have any reason to have to take it off. I mean, obviously, if you're hot, but it does keep you cool, too. Like, oh, it's yeah. the best idea I've ever heard. And actually, was it last year or maybe or the year before? Just Work actually pitched it to Vito to yes. tell them to make camel bags, which I think would be the most incredible idea ever. Yeah, even when I put the Hydrate or dehydrate. <clears throat> Yeah, when, when I put the ice in the bag, your whole back is is cold, so yes. it's, it feels you're like you're, you're, you're cooling a, yourself down at the same time while you're right. hydrating. It's a dual so, purpose. Dual purpose. Yeah. There you go. Absolutely. Uh, this well, what happened though still, when you guys were like dying in 140 degree attics, and then you posted that video? I was like, this is something that really needs to be talked about more. Is easily accessible water. Oh yeah, um, and and just in in while you're working, just you know, because I do I do RTUs you have to too. Stop. Uh, on the roofs, I'm just, it's just normal. You're just, you're working on whatever. And then you just grab the, the tube and just start oh, hydrating. And yeah. yeah. It's, no stopping you, you to, to find your water and then open it up and then take a drink. And then you wait a minute because you need to take another drink. By then you've pounded your whole water. Like it's just. <laughs> and then also you don't have something to. Something you don't you, think about. Also, you don't have to worry about trash, the the, the water bottles. You don't have to mm. take up your own thing. Uh, my, my question yeah. is, is now I got to pee. Like, what, what am I doing here? <laughs> All this water talk, you know? All of a sudden, I got to... On the roof, button. it's one thing. <laughs> on the roof, it's one thing. And I can tell anybody who works on rooftop units, always assume that everything you touch on a rooftop has been peed on. At least yes, at one yes, point yes, in time. Yes. Basements, too. The basement <laughs> drain has been peed in by many. I promise. Yeah. My first boss, my first HVAC boss, the first week that I worked for him, I was in the basement of this really big apartment building. And I, he was, we were actually debating about how zone valves worked because he was totally wrong and I was totally right. But that's neither here nor there. So he leaves and he calls me. And I think it was to punish me. I really do. He calls me and he says, I forgot my pee bottle. You have to get uh -oh. it. You have to grab it. And I'm like, See, God pee, damn it. Pee bottles are dangerous. <laughs> I start... literally had to smuggle it out <laughs> under my shirt like this. Yeah. I had to yeah, smuggle my... his pee out. Here's the thing, though. You start <laughs> peeing in bottles. Well, then people, people might drink. start getting confused with the bottles, you know, water. Everybody's drinking yeah. it. No, I'm I... not a proponent of pissing in bottles. Yeah. No. yeah. Dunkin' want... Cups it, are my jam. It, it, it's it the sucks. same problem, though. It sucks when you go when I start riding with the install guys and they got like 50 bottles back then. You're thirsty <laughs> and you're just looking at all this. <laughs> I touch nothing. It's all pee. No. It's like, no, damn, you don't drink it. Damn, like, 
That is not no, Gatorade. There's not no one bottle that's good. There are 50 bottles yep. all back there of all peed. <laughs> Wouldn't trust it anyway. Damn installers. I always go in, I always go in my the back of my trailer. Like I have a 16 foot box trailer. So I go in the trailer and I pee in a Duncan cup. But I am infamous for forgetting to like take it because there's people around or whatever. So Val will like take off driving and he's like, What was that? And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, so bad but he's putting a bathroom in there and we're getting an incinerator toilet have you heard about these things mm -mm. they're kind of hvac so it's a, a portable toilet like a camper toilet almost and it's an incinerator it's propane fired incinerator so oh, there's wow. no it doesn't have to go anywhere it just lights your pee and your i don't know if it dumps the pee or not but it lights your poop on fire i guess and incinerates it <laughs> like wow. it's awesome we're putting a bathroom in our 16 foot box trailer huh insane Nice. Uh, Different. I want to see that video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna document it. <laughs> um, I. All right, Rudy. I, anything that you want to say to the world? Uh, it's ten o'clock. Well, so definitely, so. definitely, I want to say, you know, thank you, Jennifer. I know you sent me over some information to help Always. apartment apartment maintenance guys get better in really their, in their field. Um, you know, I definitely want to say to the older techs help the younger techs do things the right way. If there's a way where somebody has more of a better chance or more of an opportunity or has the means, which you know a lot of us don't, look into boys and girls clubs, introduce the trades to them. We need- Yeah, if people. anybody knows how we can get on that wagon, you let us know. Like Just Work, me, myself, Ryan, probably I'm sure, like we'll all get in on that if anybody knows how to go about something like that. Um, our community is beautiful. The HVAC community, uh, Instagram is beautiful. Let's let's just keep riding with it, make it better, make it cooler for. If we're trying to introduce it to these young people, they're gonna see like, man, Jennifer, you know, maybe like a like a mentor, you know, like a big brother, big sister to these type of groups that we're trying to attract. And it's all for yeah, we just started a mentor program too. So if you, I actually haven't put it on Instagram yet, but it's on Facebook, hvhx.com. If you want a mentee under you, if you want to be a mentor, go on there and uh, fill out the sign up form. You can be a mentor to an HVAC mentee that needs help. Because yeah, there's you already want, 10 signups. If you you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan, I'm sorry to cut you off, right? I'm, I'm a fan of everybody, right? So, you know, when, when I'm in this community, I, I don't want to be like, oh, look at me. I, I want to look at everybody. So yeah. if we attract like the boys and girls clubs, right? I want to see the next bed. I want to see the next yeah. doctor that's that's the up and coming. You know, I, that's what I want to see. Yeah. So outgrow like, us. That's outgrow us and, and make it better. Yes. Yes, man. Uh, sure. So if you guys are interested in working with uh, uh, Rodolfo here, check out his Instagram. It's just work HVAC. The dude is a good dude. I talked, I That's sat incredible. and talked with him and his wife at the HVAC Tactical Awards. He's a good dude. He's a family man. He's a working man. He's from Texas. I love that. Oh, yeah. He's uh, a girl dad. Good yes, dude. <laughs> and, and like I was going to say, if you want a mentee, but if you want more than one, you can be a, you can get mentos. Right. That's true. Very true. You could be do, Mentos. Do, do, Mentos. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Mentos. Fresh and full of life. Mentos, fresh <laughs> Yeah. Check out Rodolfo uh, on Instagram, uh, Just Work HVAC. And once you hit that follow button, you'll get five to 10 notifications per day because he's For going lives, live everybody. all the time. I love it. And you know what? I click <laughs> on them and I, I, I check in on the lives as much as I can. Because a lot of times I'm like, I just can't right now. But uh, you know, there's no shortage of lives. The dude's a good yep. dude. I really yeah. like you, Rodolfo. Thank um, you, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, no. Just real fast, I'm gonna bring back the the Friday hat days and look out for the contractors' fun day in Texas. I already had one last year, so we're we're making plans to do another, the second one this year. Awesome. So well, let me know. Now. I'll push that for you guys. That's thank awesome. You, you, and and we didn't even get into the hot side kitchen work that you do because of your background in heating. Uh, maybe yes. that'll be for next time you come on the show. I would love to time. come back. I love you guys. Thank you for the opportunity. And God bless everybody on the other side of the screen. And let's make this community bigger and better and stronger always. Amen, brother. For sure. Awesome. Well, I think All that's right, guys. about it. Jennifer, good show. 
You look awesome. I, I let me just say it one last time. I'm loving you in that Guns N' Roses shirt. Thank I can't you. help it. Thank you. My wife's probably gonna be like, oh, "You're too flirty with Jen on the show." I, sorry, <laughs> can't help myself. Well, she All wore right. Guns N' Roses too. Yeah. All right, guys, Rodolfo, thanks again. Tell hey, uh, good luck. Uh, 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 blessings to you and your family and everybody there. God bless you. Sure. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We'll see you on the next night, everybody.